afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's Math Monday, and you know what that means? We get to do gymnastics with algebra. Uh, pretty excited about today's uh, little shtick and spiel. Before I go into it, don't forget to like, subscribe. There's a bell over there. Why don't you give it a little before we move forward? I'll give you a second. Uh, today we're going to be covering on Math Monday how to determine your instantaneous pozzolanic surface area from colloidal silica. And there's some basic information that you need to have from the back of the soup can. So if you're getting a colloidal silica admixture and your end user, or excuse me, not your end user, your manufacturer is not telling you the particle size or the surface area or your pozzolanic um, purity as well as the solid content, you're not going to be able to really do this math, but for all intents and purposes, we're going to assume that you have the particle size, but more importantly, the surface area and the pozzolanic purity. And with that, we can determine the instantaneous pozzolanic surface area or silica surface area that we're getting from our specific colloidal silica distribution. Now, this assumes also that you've got a fairly narrow distribution. You could do the calculation with a wider distribution of particle sizes, but it's not going to be as accurate. So here, um, before we get into it, we have our, that instantaneous silica surface area that I was talking about is going to be equal to the weight of dry colloidal silica multiplied by the particle surface area and the percent purity of that silica for our, our, our colloidal silicon. Normally that's 99% or plus, unless you have some type of a modification to it. Now, determine the dry weight of the colloidal silica. It's actually fairly easy. You're going to take your total cementitious, you're going to multiply it by the replacement percentage. So that'll give you a pounds per cubic yard, assuming you're in pounds per cubic yard. And then we're going to multiply that by 453 0.6 grams per pound to convert it to grams. Now with that, we're going to jump back into our surface area equation. And again, so now we have grams per cubic yard. We're going to multiply that by that, that, that particle surface area, which is normally in meters squared per gram. So that gram cancels out the gram here, and we're left with meters squared. And then finally, our percent of our pozzolanic surface area will give you that final value. And it's a weird one. It's meters squared per cubic yard. Now, we use that um, when we're trying to back calculate the amount of colloidal silica that we want to use in comparison to, let's say, a silica fume or a class F flash, where, again, we can determine the amount of silica surface area that our silica fume or micro silica or fly ash brings us and then from there determine how much colloidal silica we'll need to get that same surface area. Here are some of the variables we're using, that percent replacement of total cementitious or percent replace. The total cementitious or total cement in pounds per cubic yard. Uh, and then we're going to look at that pozzolanic purity again that's normally over 99%. The weight of colloidal silica per cubic yard and that's going to be in grams per cubic yard. Um, and then the particle surface area, which is going to be in meters squared per gram. And then finally, our actual silica surface area, which is going to be meters squared per cubic yard. And we're going to do some magic for you, because we want to get you some numbers up there, so... Did we just do some magic? We got a problem right there for behind you. We're going to work through these numbers using the uh, values or the formulas that I gave you before with the variables. So our total cementitious is 517 pounds per cubic yard. We want to use 0.05% of this colloidal silica dispersion uh, that gives us, if you multiply 517 pounds per cubic yard by 0.05%, you get 0.26 pounds and then you multiply 0.26 pounds by 453.6 grams per pound to give you 118 grams of dry colloidal silica, not the dispersion, but dry colloidal silica grams per cubic yard. Now for this 
colloidal silica, we have around a 10 nanometer particle. So our particle surface area is 250 meters squared per gram. Now, there is a calculation out there. Um, I'll post or I'll have Patchouli put the link in to the paper that allows you to convert your particle size to your surface area. Um, for this colloidal silica dispersion, we've got 99.8 pozzolanic purity or that silica purity. So by using these values, that 250 meters squared per gram times 118 grams per cubic yard and our pozzolanic purity, we get 2.93 times 10 to the fourth meters squared per cubic yard. Now again, what we would normally do is calculate that same value for our silica fume or for our fly ash, use that pozzolanic surface area, feed it into our system so that number would go right here and then based off of our values we would back calculate how much of that dry colloidal silica we would need and then from there we would also we would calculate our fluid ounces per hundred weight to get the colloidal silica dispersion into the back of the truck. You need to know how to take this value and convert it into a fluid ounces per hundred weight so you could put it into your batch computer or milliliters per, per uh, kilogram of cementitious. So if we don't have that, or if we do have that, we'll throw it in the uh, section below, but if we don't, we'll do another video on it. So thanks for joining us today. Hope you understood. If you have any questions, let us know. Have an awesome day. Go concrete, beat asphalt.